Hello and welcome to CNN News 18. This is Kumalika Sengupta. We have with us a very, very, very special guest, an officer who has served the forces for more than 40 years, an officer with most decorated titles with his name. We here we have with us today the Eastern Commander, uh, Lieutenant General Rana Pratap Kalita, and we are very honored to have him with us in CNN News 18. Sir, uh, welcome to CNN News 18 Thank and thanks a lot for giving us time I and mean, it's your busy, busy schedule because 31st is your last day, sir. Thank you for inviting me as a guest. Sir, the very first question is that how do you compare the infrastructure, uh, development, infrastructure development of India and China? You have been in that uh, command which is one of the most talked about command for strategic reason. Yes, if you look at the uh, Eastern Theater, uh, the infrastructure development in the Eastern Theater had taken some time, uh, primarily because of the challenges of terrain and the weather conditions uh, that are prevalent in the entire Eastern Theater. And if you look at non-borders in the states of Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh, uh, the infrastructure development has taken place quite a lot in last about 10-15 years. So we started but, late sir? But it's still, uh, you know, the PLA is slightly ahead of us because they started early and we started late. And particularly in some specific areas which were not connected earlier. So it will take some time to catch up with the adversary. Uh, but I'm sure, I'm sure the way the focus is being given on the development of infrastructure by the government as well as all the agencies that are involved. Uh, in years to come, I'm sure we'll be able to meet the requirement that is there of the requisite infrastructure development. Then we'll go ahead of China. Uh, it is not a question of, you know, race between the two countries, but uh, whatever is required for our own uh, movement of troops or logistics, we'll be able to meet all these requirements. Sir, in last 10 years, as you pointed out, Arunachal has changed, people say, Sikkim has changed, specifically the road to Tawang, if you can elaborate, sir. Yeah, definitely all across uh, there has been uh, focus uh, not only on development of road, like when you talk about road to Tawang, you are aware that the tunnel at Nechifu has already been commissioned. The Sela tunnel is also nearing construction, that is completion that is going to ensure or facil give us uh, all weather connectivity even during the winter months to Tawang. It's going and to be great inaugurated? Yes, it is likely to be inaugurated shortly. So all these are taking place. It is not only in terms of road uh, infrastructure, it is also in terms of uh, your data connectivity, your mobile connectivity, the construction of helipads and the ALGs which we say so all these multifarious developmental activities are taking place all across Arunachal as well as Sikkim. So it's absolute a change. Yes, of course. As, and also you were aware of the uh, vibrant village program, yes, which has been driven by the, which has been which being driven by the central government, of course with uh, support of the state government, as also armed forces and the CAPF who are deployed there. Uh, all the stakeholders are involved in it to give a push to this vibrant village pro uh, program. So right now, uh, we, how many vibrant villages are yet to come up? We have Kibithu, we have Zimithang. Uh, there are, there are uh, certain, uh, the total overall is about more than 500 that has been identified. So, you know, with this development, uh, and uh, you know, you have taken charge, obviously post, post Dokalam uh, era. How do you see the situation in Arunachal? In your tenure, uh, there has not been much uh, problems uh, like we had in Dokalam. There were like some few. How do you see the situation in Arunachal now? Situation uh, in Arunachal with all these infrastructure development that is taking place in both sides plus also presence of troops on both sides close to the LAC. And the situation is though stable and we have been able to resolve any sort of uh, differences through dialogue and through existing border protocols. 
uh, but I would say that overall the situation is stable, but it still remains unpredictable. So, so why are you saying unpredictable? Uh, because as long as uh, you know the border issue is not resolved between the two countries, any sort of you know differences or any sort of minor scuffle or minor incident happening has the potential of escalation. So that is why I have said that it, 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 it's unpredictable. Stand by Moon. So a lot of developments in Arunachal definitely. If you come to the other state which is a much talked about state this year, that's Manipur sir. Still Manipur is not coming back to normalcy. Why? You have traveled. Um, forces have done a lot in Manipur. It's because of the forces things were holding in me. Why do you uh, think that still the problem? When will it be normal? Yeah, Manipur, uh, there are a lot of uh, factors involved as far as the instability in Manipur is concerned. Uh, firstly, there are, uh, you know, that there are three tribes who basically inhabit Manipur, the Kukis, the Nagas and the Metis. So there has been some historical issues, some legacy issues, uh, which are there between these three tribes as to who came there first and who were the original inhabitants and who came in later point of time. And there are also allegations of, you know, expansion of uh, areas by some tribes and, uh, uh, and various uh, restrictions that are placed on, uh, on particularly Metis because the Valley people, they cannot buy properties in the hillside, whereas the vice versa is uh, allowed. So those sort of issues, then the ST for the Maitage, that has been an issue. So all these issues combined together, uh, I think, uh, led up to the violence that broke out on 3rd of May. Uh, initially, you were aware that uh, it escalated in Churachanpur, More and Imphal. And with the timely induction and uh, proactive action taken by the armed forces, uh, Sam Rafal, with help from the police, and the CAPF, we were able to manage the situation. There were close to about 35,000 uh, displaced people who were uh, moved to safety by us, uh, including the Assam Rifle yes. and the CAPF. And then thereafter, our focus has been to control the violence parameters so that it doesn't escalate. Uh, but the problem remains of uh, availability of weapons with both the communities, whether they were stolen from uh, the armories or uh, which came from Myanmar, uh, there are different quantities which are ascribed, but that remains a problem. Uh, I think in a, in a civilized, in a democratic setup, in a civilized society, uh, there is no place for any weapon because if the availability of weapon is there, any minor incident can also escalate into a violent uh, sort of uh, incident. So that remains a challenge as also the current instability in Myanmar and those fightings which are going on close to the Indo-Myanmar border between the Myanmar army and uh, the opposing forces there, uh, they are also creating, you know, refugee situation in Mizoram and Manipur. Uh, so the influx of these people, though some of them are going back, some of them decide to stay back. So because of this cross movement uh, of people, uh, the Enemical animals are also using these for gun running, for contraband and narcotic smuggling. Mm. So all these are also somewhere contributing towards the instability in Manipur. So the so Myanmar uh, effect is there in Manipur? It is there to some extent, yes, definitely it is there. And, uh, and this next thing is the, both the communities which are involved in conflict. Uh, I feel that they need to sit down together across the table and uh, discuss and deliberate and find their way ahead. I think that is the, that will probably lead to the permanent solution. I am conscious that a lot of efforts are being made by the central government and the state government and various agencies which are operating in that area to promote dialogue between both the communities. Sir, women have been a very important force in Manipur. We have seen they have been agitating against the forces also from time immemorial. How do you see the role of Mira Pai Bees in this conflict? They have been, uh, you know, traditionally the Mira Pai Bees, uh, the women, you know, occupy a large space in the society there in Manipur. 
and they have been uh, doing the role of some sort of a moral policy policing in 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 Manipur. Uh, that's been their traditional role, uh, and they have got very strong organizations. I also had the opportunity of talking to some of the Mirapaibi leadership uh, during my visit uh, to Manipur and to understand their viewpoint. Uh, initially, uh, they had opposed the activities or operations that were being conducted by us, uh, the armed forces, including the Assam rifle. Uh, but later, when we explained uh, our mandate and our aim of conducting these operations, uh, gradually they understood uh, the issues and then thereafter they stopped obstructing us. Uh, definitely they have a huge role to play I would say uh, in uh, giving correct advice to the youth so that they don't go astray and uh, they don't take up arms and go into a wrong side of the society and they become responsible citizens. I think that's the role uh, I would recommend Mira Paibish to. Yeah, but at times they were like Stopping the forces. Yes, I know. Initially they were, but when they understood uh, the mandate that was given to us and why we are operating in a particular manner, then thereafter they stopped uh, obstructing us. Sir, if you could elaborate in, you know, what's happening in Myanmar, and you have already pointed out the Manipur effect in Mizoram, how do you foresee this, what's coming in? Myanmar, the basic thing, what... And a lot of insurgents go and, you know, hide out there, are insurgents. Traditionally, our uh, insurgents groups from uh, Manipur as well as uh, Nagaland and Assam, Ulfa uh, plus NSCN, uh, KYA from Nagaland, even some group of sprinter group of NSCN, IM is also having a camp across India, Myanmar, as also the Manipur uh, militant groups have also got camps in Myanmar. So they had been operating from those uh, camps coming coming into uh, India and carrying out their operation or extortion or things like that and then going back. Uh, the recent operation conflict between the Myanmar army and the PDF sub and the other uh, EAGs in Myanmar has also impacted uh, some of these camps. So I am told that uh, they were forced to vacate uh, some of these camps which they were occupying. So it is definitely going to make, if the fighting continues the way it is, in the areas close to the Indo-Myanmar border, inside Myanmar, it is going to impact the camps which are established by these militant groups. So I think it is time that uh, we have already taken an initiative and the state government along with the central government had signed the a ceasefire agreement with the UNLFP mm. and I believe some more talks are going on to uh, motivate the other uh, groups also to get into a some sort of a dialogue and thereafter get into a ceasefire agreement. Because otherwise that insurgents pressure will, I mean they will all come this side and that would, and the talks is on. Talks on. So this is a long border and you know how do you, uh, how will the uh, command uh, strength in that uh, work has already started in your tenure. Yes, uh, the the border is long over uh, and it's over difficult terrain, mostly jungle and uh, hilly terrain. Uh, so the infrastructure is not available in most of the areas. So Honorable Home Minister had already approved uh, construction of border fence along the Indo-Myanmar border. Uh, it has been divided into various phases uh, because of the time which is required and uh, the pro work has already started. The aim is to construct a uh, fence all along the Indo-Myanmar border in various... In Manipur phases. also work has... In Manipur it's also not it has sto started. It's stalled for the present conflict? No, no it's it gone. is not. It is going on. It is going on. It has not stopped. So the whole border area is, border is going to be fenced and alongside the fencing, the road communication will also come up. And that is going to facilitate functioning of the security forces in stopping influx of people as also smuggling of guns and the narcotics. Sir, uh, you have uh, said about um, about the uh, the insurgents group uh, of Myanmar, the camps which are there, who actually go and hide out there, the insurgents of this. Uh, we are having talks with Alpha and 29th, uh, they are going to also sign the agreement. How do you see to that? 
I think that's a quite positive development because the the Protoc Alpha group, which had come over ground long time back, the final uh, agreement was not taking place uh, because the discussions were going on, uh, and any sort of uh, final resolution uh, of this problem uh, with the signing of some sort of an agreement between Alpha and the government is a very very welcome step. Uh, but alongside that, it is also important to uh, involve and engage uh, the Alpha Independent, which is led by Paresh Barua, which are still in Myanmar in various camps. I think it is equally important for us to engage and try and get them over as well for talks. That's, that's very important. Sir, uh, we have seen uh, suddenly the Sikkim incident, the natural disaster, nature's fury, and it affected the Eastern Command. Do you think that climate should also be a part of the military aspects now? It's, it's high time. Yeah, the climatic conditions and the weather patterns are definitely an important, uh, should I say, ingredient in our military planning process. However, such type of natural disasters cannot be predicted. So, this particular uh, glacial outburst in Sikkim uh, had damaged a lot of infrastructure, uh, uh, armed forces as well as the civilian infrastructure were damaged. And we also suffered a uh, lot of, you know, loss of equipments and men as well, apart from loss of civilians and all. Yeah, and the damnation yeah. problem. But then that's part of the process and I think uh, we need to continue to consider the climatic uh, changes that are taking place uh, in our planning process. So, man, definite unit should come up. You yeah. Should. Whichever man, we have certain specialists who, who are aware of all these things, and but, and it's not a armed forces uh, duty alone. That's what I think. Uh, it's a, it's a completely whole of a nation approach which should be taken, as far as these climatic issues are concerned. Sir, another interesting question, which is uh, obviously thirty first is your last. So, what next? What are your future plans? Uh, you are aware of the uh, challenges that are there for the Eastern Army commander because of uh, the extent of non borders as well as the counter insurgency operations in states in Manipur, which you have already talked about. So, so far I have not had uh, time to think what is to be done uh, after 31st. Uh, the only thing I have decided is. I'm going to go back to my home state, uh, that's Assam, and <coughs> settle down there. Rangia. And, uh, yeah, Varangya is my hometown, but I'm going to settle down in Guwahati. That's where uh, I'm going to be after 31st. And uh, thereafter, uh, I need some time to, you know, resolve certain personal issues and all. And then uh, I'm ready to be able to work for social causes. I think that's the aim. What exactly, in what form I'm going to do, that I have not yet decided. Sir, you have uh, given so many years for the nation, more than 40 years for the nation. So definitely, there we have seen uh, uh, officers, we have seen uh, people going to politics, and obviously there will be an offer that's doing the rounds, sir, uh, in all the blocks, in Delhi and also in Eastern Command. So, if there is an offer, would you like to work for the people? It is too early for me to say anything. I have to uh, think about what exactly I want to do post-retirement and what would give me more satisfaction. Like I said, uh, I am willing to work for the society, for the development of the society. So, in what form that uh, I am going to take some time to decide. I know, but the 2024 elections is there. So, if there is an offer, then what would be your reaction? It's too early for me to say anything. But definitely, you will be working for. And what's your message for the Eastern Commander, uh, the, who will be coming, and the, your soldiers in Eastern Command? No, Eastern Command, my uh, the, my successor is a very very competent and professional soldier, and he has a huge experience of having operated here as in Eastern Command. And I wish them all the best and I am sure under his leadership the Eastern Kamar will continue to flourish and will fulfill the mandate of uh, securing the borders as well as maintaining peace in the hinterland. 
So, my best wishes will always remain with them. With them. So this was uh, the army commander who is uh, retiring on 31st and definitely he has not said what he is going to do but he has given all best wishes for the Eastern Command and he has said that he is going to continue and uh, do work for the society, social work. Now this, where does this social work goes? Do we see him in a different role or not? That time will say, but definitely a very good tenure for Eastern Commander handling all the challenges and also uh, handling the most strategic command in India.